Hello, Gary and Mendham. Welcome, one and all, to Getting Personal with Gary. Now, Gary's declared this personal. He says, I started it. I know he started it, but whichever, he is allowed to declare it personal now. Got a blanket cape. Probably for security. <clears throat> now, I have not gotten personal with Gary, but I do have a few things to say and to respond, especially since people always act weird, not everybody of course, but about this kind of interchange. Why am I have always have to explain why am I even talking to Gary? If you don't like it, why do you come back? Well, because we're not romantic partners. We're discussioneers. And I deal with whoever comes to the table and Gary is, you know, never ending and coming back to the table. But it's obviously dysfunctional. And it's been interesting to me because See, I see myself as the Steve Irwin or Richard Attenborough of if ideas and attitudes were little animals, right? Attitude collector. Now, online, it's rare that you get good ideas just from your random people, but it happens. Casino McCool, Bark Lord, Conference Report, To Be Serious, Das Buch. I mean, I'm forgetting people. And including interesting ideas that are just attitudes, but they're still interesting ideas. Like, you know, various examples. And, um, to me, they're all interesting. All of the above. And, uh, Gary's like, Gary, you are like, what are those tiny alligators? Those little miniature alligators. It's like wrestling a little miniature alligator. What are those tiny alligators? Um, a caiman. Cayman. So let's get some pictures of a Cayman so we, everybody knows what I'm talking about. You just have to wait a moment. So these little out. Is there one with the person? I don't see one with the person, but still, they're just little alligators. That's what Gary's like. Wrestling a small alligator. You got to be gentle. You want to be gentle. But that's the thing about Gary getting person. I mean, I thought I was being uh, understanding, assuming that Gary's personal attacks were because he was getting anxious. And this anxiety was part of the anxiety syndrome that Gary claims to have. But, <clears throat> turns out, um, according to Gary, that's not the case. His anxiety problem is evidently like he gets anxiety in some situations. It has nothing to do with him personally attacking all of us. 
other people's anxiety and pain. That's not a part of his disorder. What the fuck? He doesn't care about that. I what was I thinking? So. Um, so there's various things I'd like to say since Gary you're I guess you're not a caiman you're not something that I should be careful of because of your emotional issues um so there are a couple things I'd like to say to you. Okay, first of all, on the drinking. Yes, I drink. Now, not as much as I drank 13 years ago uh, when I was making the videos you're talking about. Uh, but who cares? What's your, what's your fucking problem? You pick your nose and masturbate too much. Uh, that's your personal business. Right? And, you know, we know why you don't drink. Because you were an alcoholic at, what, 13 or something. Uh, remember? Hiding bottles of rum on the way to school. Remember? So that's why you don't drink. And you're going to attack other people. So it's none of your business. You know, it's just, it's just a random, but not random. It's an attack to try to push a button. And you should think about yourself. And, and similarly now with my daughter uh, who overdosed uh, you want to use that against me now I don't know if you know or not but I'm pretty sure I've said I don't go into it in depth on this uh, on YouTube's but uh, I do blame myself people say don't blame yourself and whatnot I do but you know because I believe that I can take responsibility I can actually take responsibility so could you close the door? Thanks, the dog opened the door. So, um, also, she has responsibility. There's a, a, a lot of things going on. Imagine, now, like, imagine your dad. Um, how does he feel about how you turned out? Does he take responsibility? Well, it's his right to take responsibility. You also still have responsibility, though right so it's it's similar now i think your dad is lucky compared to me but you know that's also a matter of personal opinion right now the interesting thing here is that it doesn't matter uh as far as the discourse between you and me the non-personal objective reality of it you say i'm a failure because my daughter died that's fine, but that's because my daughter died. So that means that the death of my daughter is failure. If my daughter had lived, that would be a success. Which means ephalism is totally bullshit. Because living is success, you said, and death is failure, you said. So ephalism's bullshit. And antinatalism's highly in question. Now, why would antinatalism partially still stand? You can't go that deep into the subject. Even, even antinatalism, you don't understand well enough. So, you've gone through tragedies before. You know? You know, tragedies that for you personally were just as severe as, as my tragedy of losing my daughter. Um, your tragedy, for example, would be that you had to move once. Now, you were not thankful enough for the place I told you at the time through all of those years. You should be thankful. Stop being so bitter. Look how lucky you are and you have a place to walk and da -da, all this stuff. And you just refuse to be thankful. You refuse to be thankful now for what remains. Right? So that's a tragedy. Does that mean that it wasn't good? To have that place no it was see my daughter's living would be a good thing because living's a good thing you believe that too because you call the opposite of that failure and I agree with you 
Um, you know, but not everybody. People try to tell me opposite, but I feel like I'm not going to give up that responsibility. That is mine to hold on to. But is it hard and heavy and does it? Yeah, that's the. Way. There's nothing wrong with that in life. That's the there. There's weight to life. Whatever. There's mass, inertia, momentum. However you want to look at it. It is what it is, as they say. So the good things are good, and that proves you all wrong. So I won that 15 years of argument. Now, Heithla Day. Heithla Day. I was friends with Heithla Day. Um, up until about eight months or something, a year maybe, before he committed suicide, uh, we were talking, you know, regularly and, you know, not making so many videos and stuff sometimes. And... Uh, he was a guy who I finally realized, you know what, you can be friends with someone online that you met online that you've never met personally, you know, at a certain point, a certain number of hours or whatever. I'll have to take that later. So, and you know, we talked about you and his idea of your ideas and all of this philosophy stuff. Now, about eight months before he committed suicide, you know, he uh, made a video kind of breaking up with me as a friend and then ghosted me on Skype. And I think that was him preparing because he'd always said, you know, eventually I'm going to commit suicide. But I chose the wrong time the first time and various things. And I think he blocked me out because I was always more like, hey, there's, you're doing great lives do live and he probably wanted to block that out because i wouldn't say like hey don't commit suicide and all that obvious stuff but i you know like the last thing i said to him before he ghosted me and he didn't reply to me was i was suggesting hey you should apply to khan academy or one of these teaching sites because i applied to one and i couldn't really do it but you're really good with the whiteboard and 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 I think you can teach and then you don't have the problem you do the stream of mathematics but you don't you know you're not really prepared to teach regular old middle school the way it is these days do it this way and I think you know he had already made up his mind um a, in a long-term sense and so when he finally got ready you know he rejected that but then right before he committed suicide he was like he made up uh, as far as with everybody and and he had a non-bitter attitude and he was resigned but he he was like I don't even remember why ghost you and we talked a little before then so we talked so you're in no position to talk about height of the day you, you didn't never had that kind of relationship um he agreed with you on certain things and he was honest about it but he didn't think much of your character um so again you're just trying to throw a thing where really of course that falls flat because I was friends with Heithel today and I'm sorry he's gone you could give a shit so you talking about it, it means nothing All right. now the final thing that has become true with you is the science denialism and the thing about science denialism in your case especially is that it's totally fucking bad shit insane like it was bad enough when you thought quantum mechanics or relativity were somehow a hoax and a conspiracy fine maybe you know like because for example i would say there was string theory for several decades and they all thought that was for sure going to turn out true but it, it didn't but guess what in science you can say it didn't run why they built the lhc and its predictions didn't come true now, when you get down to things like uh, kinetic energy, uh, if you look, you'll find, it, yeah, it's hard to find people doing the experiments, but you'll see tons of high school and college students doing kinetic energy measurements and experiments. The idea that it's all a hoax, and not just a hoax of a certain type of person in your society, like scientists or people that want to pretend they're smart. It's like, hey, none of us are smart, but let's all fool everybody else by agreeing on kinetic energy internationally. So the Soviets never were like, you know, comrade, let's uh, expose these guys. We can prove it. You know, it's just... It's it's so insane and so like I've got my it's very flat earth, and watching Gary 
scary watching you disagree with the other dissident scientists because of their flat earthiness is like that applies to you dude so i think i covered the the personal things where you have attacked me gary that were of interest to me I, you'll probably go on and on and on about it and especially since uh, you know you have made me interested in talking about why you know acceleration equals the change in velocity over the change in time and things like controversial things like that you know why F equals MA is not the same as work times distance things like that so this will be that then I think, Gary, that while you might want to blame your father for how you turned up, you, you really should, um, you, you can do that, but the blame that falls on him is totally separate. Like, if 100% of the blame fell on him, then 100% of the blame also falls on you. 